fast is never entirely fast. As William Irvin finds out in this story called Wade in the Water, from my new book, Early Dark. Mr. Will, would you like some dessert? We have apple pie with ice cream or peach cobbler. You can have ice cream with the cobbler too, if you like. The pretty young woman in the blue smock startled William, concentrating as he was on the last spoonful of his beef stew, trying to decide whether to continue wielding his spoon or lay it down and attack the remains with his fork. The spoon was safer, but his hand still remembered the fork. William smiled. She really was quite lovely, he thought, bright and cool as the morning. Her smock matched her eyes. Could you keep the pie and just bring me a spoonful of that ice cream, dear? Forgive this old man, if you will, but I can't recall your name. Caroline, she said, returning his smile, magnified and enhanced. You got it, Mr. Will. Ice cream, William said again. Don't forget. Don't worry, I won't forget. I'll be right back. I was talking to myself, William said. They both laughed. He watched her walk away toward the kitchen. He wished Caroline would either call him Will or just say Mr. and use his last name, whatever it was. Friend or formal, William liked his relationships tightly defined. When she stopped on her way to talk to a couple of old people at a table midway across the room, the ice cream was lost to thought. William had other things on his mind. He recollected his mission when another of the pale blue staff passed the table where he sat alone. None of the other residents liked to sit with him lately. They thought he was deaf because he couldn't follow the complicated banter they regarded as conversation. What William considered conversation involved a little less talking and a lot more listening. The passing staffer shouldered a duffel, obviously on his way out to his home world. William glanced around. Assured he was beyond anyone's notice, he slipped silently out of his chair and followed the duffel. He was only a couple of steps behind when Blue Boy coded the door to opening and stepped out. The instant before the door latched behind Blue Boy, William scotched it with his toe. He had practiced this maneuver more times than he could remember, but his timing had always been off this time. His execution was perfect. The young man crossed the parking lot, threw his duffel into the back of a red mini, and before he slid behind the wheel, glanced back at the door. At this distance, it must have appeared to him closed, because when William smiled through the glass and waved, Blue Boy smiled and waved back, got into his little car, and drove away. William opened the door slightly, slipped through, and let it close behind him before the alarm sounded. He peered back through the glass. Inside the hall was empty. Nobody had seen him seize his liberating moment. 